The stage is set for another engaging governorship race in Edo State in southern Nigeria. Following the emergence of the two men who contested the same position four years ago, after primary elections held over the last two weeks, a former secretary to the Edo State government, Osage Ize Iyamu, easily won the nomination of the ruling party, the All Progressives Congress. But a more eventful sequence of events was thrown up when incumbent Governor Godwin Obaseki left the ruling party, APC, for the main opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP, as he desperately sought for a platform to seek re-election as governor. After so much politicking, Governor Obaseki eventually realized his ambition when yesterday he secured the ticket of the PDP in Benin, the state capital. But according to political analysts, this is where the work really begins for him. What will be his game plan going forward, particularly in terms of stakeholder engagements? Ambitions were sacrificed, all in a bid to offer him a pedestal to contest. How will Obaseki bring everyone under the same umbrella? Manage egos and still keep an eye on the ball. That's where we'll begin our conversation this morning with Dr. Don Pedro Obaseki the chieftain of the People's Democratic Party, founder and managing director of ACC Broadcast Multimedia Limited. Welcome to the program, Don Pedro Abaseke. Good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, Ruben. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. And good morning, Rufai. Good, good morning. morning. How are you? Good to see well, you again. <laughs> Don Pedro, what yeah. is happening in your state? Uh, what do you make of what has happened in the APC and the PDP and the fact that what we're having now in Edo State uh, is a reversal of what happened in 2016. Uh, two main candidates, Ize Iyamu and then uh, Obaseki. Uh, is Obaseki your relation, if I may ask? Uh, yes, he's my elder brother. Oh, okay, good. But what's your take beyond family uh, <laughs> relations? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, my my participation in the process has always been beyond family, and also in the reversal wasn't just um, uh, on the part of um, both Mr. Godwin Obaseki and Mr. Osage Zeyam. It's also a reversal on my part. Um, in the last election, I was on I was uh, one of the campaign directors for Mr. Osage Zeyam, so it's not about family. And so my take is very simple. I think that the Edo Nation has actually pressed the reset button for democratic engagement in Nigeria. And I truly believe that after this time out, after this election, Nigeria may not just be the same again in terms of the paradigms of politicking, particularly at the gubernatorial level in the whole country. So I believe that um, now, the real, real work begins, and at the end of the day, I truly believe that the Edo people will come out better at the end of the day. Why do you say that Nigeria will never be the same again after this? What's so different about what just transpired? You know, in the last uh, uh, 10, 15 months, Edo State have been in the very epicenter of what I used to call a badly scripted soap opera. But now we are seeing the, the, the patterns have emerged, clear patterns have emerged. And one, we all know the issues that led to all the rancor that took place in, in Benin, in Edo State. And as a result of that, we proved a few things. Number one, that there must be a very, very strong message sent to those who sit behind the sanctuary of doors and maybe uh, fleece away our collective patrimony. And that has shown itself clearly in the engagements between the sitting governor, Mr. Godwin Obaseki, and the erstwhile governor of the state, and now erstwhile the chairman of the APC, uh, Mr. Adam Soshomole. And if we take that, taking into consideration what has happened in other clients, particularly in the southwest, like in Lagos State, in Ogun State, where Mr. Amosun once said that there was an offshore primaries, and that was and that was taken with levity, or like what happened in the case of uh, Akwaibom between Udom Emmanuel and Mr. Akpabio. So what we are saying 
is that clear court patterns have been set. There are men who have decided, like the governor, to take this fight to his very logical conclusion. And we are beginning to see the fallouts. We are beginning to identify who the real protagonist is and who the antagonist or the bad man, as you get in every movie, is. At the end of the day, this, this soap opera, this melodrama, will get to a final, a final uh, climax. And that will be on the, on the 19th of September, 2020, when the adult people will move out and go and vote. Right. Uh, I, I want to talk about, you know, two things. Uh, number one, uh, you were very, very vociferous when uh, you, like, like it was seen generally, when Oshemale pulled the master stroke, as a lot of people claimed, that, and uh, Obaseki couldn't go through the screening process. You were very vociferous in your statement. You said this should not have happened and the likes. But with the turn of events now, that has affected your Shomale camp. What's your take? What's your read on this? What would you like to say to Adams of Shomale? And secondly, you are a student of, you know, the Bini School of Politics or the Adjusted State School of Politics. <laughs> what are the postulations as we go to these next elections? And I ask that because it's going to be a fight to finish across the lines. Two prominent politicians. Two prominent families around the Bini area, you know, it's going to be a clear division across the line. What are your postulations going into the elections? Um, <clears throat> I will start with Mr. Oshomole. I think I want to quote myself again. I once said that with what is going down, I just pray that Mr. Oshomole does not, does not morph from being a political fixer into a political dinosaur. That was what I said in one of the programs. I said it on this, on this very platform, too. And I think from what has played out in the last 78 hours, I think that has just, I, I may just have been a little uh, closet Nostradamus. Uh, Mr. Shomole right now, I, I wish him well, but from the events that have taken place, from his court cases and the summary uh, uh, dissolution uh, 24 hours ago, ago of his NWC, he seems to be confined, like most persons who take his own kind of stance, to the dung heap of our political yesterday. On the other hand, in terms of the lines being drawn, the lines have actually been drawn right from the very beginning. Maybe people didn't see the patterns clearly. In them, Mr. Isaiah Muyes has been around for quite a while. I, people are quite actually said he's one of the politicians in Nigeria, particularly within our space, who has no fixed address, and has no other uh, address outside of being in politics They're right from the weekend he left uh, the university. Uh, I think right now what we are saying is a play out of a larger political arithmetic. And if you take the political bar barometer in Benin into consideration, the victory path has been clearly designed for Mr. Governor. And um, I'm happy in the, in the, just in the, in the program you just had before you, you brought me on, yeah, I saw the commissioner of, in a, of Lagos State actually talking about reeling out, you know, points on what has actually been done in a those state where basic and, and, and secondary education is concerned. It shows that the people of Edo State have a new sheriff in town, and that sheriff is Godwin Obaseki. The election will be tough. There will be no again saying the fact that it will be very tough. But we do hope that the major players will not at any point in time sacrifice the goodwill, sacrifice the lives, sacrifice the, the people, the adult people whom they so seek to govern at, uh, on the altar of any vagrant or inordinate personal gubernatorial ambitions. I am not scared. We are here. We have decided those persons of Bini origin, those persons of Edo origin, to make sure that they all play by the rules. And if they do not, we will pull, hold them to account. And I think that this election will be a seismic paradigm shift in terms of election in Nigeria. It will be a watershed moment for all of us. I do truly believe that. 
But in terms of what, whether the families are at, um, we are prominent families, yes. And we are all related somewhat because Benin is a, is a very homogeneous setup. We are related. So, and I hope that they let that come to bear in the daily politicking as they canvass for votes. And we know who the best man is already. Uh, you know, except you are not in Benin. Forget what is going down on the propaganda platforms. And if you check the social media, you will be able to gauge the... of Edo State and where the people of Edo are at this juncture. Well, Don Pedro, you seem to be uh, very optimistic about your brother's uh, chances. Uh, suppose he loses. Suppose, you know, uh, your optimism is misplaced. And where are the people of Edo State in all of this? And then, of course, the Oba of Benin had said, oh, God, for that reason, uh, should, should end in Edo State. Does the Oba of Benin have a say in the matter? Uh, my, my Oba is the, is, the, is the conscience of our people. My Oba is the, like in Benin, I call myself the Oba. That is how you call a male. That is an, the Oba's male. So the Oba is father to all sides, both the good, the bad, and the ugly. And he's coming out uh, a, a couple of weeks ago to say there should be a stop to godfatherism. It's actually a, a, it was actually amplifying what the Edo peoples have actually almost always shown. After the 1999 to 2007 era of, of Chief Lucky Benadion, it was clear that the Edo people don't want no godfather. And they assiduously fought against that when they tried to arrest the seemingly um, uh, massive influence of Mr. Tony Aneni, uh, who was the, the leader, the way, almost the way Tinubu is being referred to now in the modern APC parlance. And that brought in a Mr. Oshomole, who stood in the front guard, told us one man, one vote, told us no man is God, along with Pastor Osage Zeyam. And that is the culture of our people. We will not like any one man to ride roughshod over the collective aspirations of our people. So I believe that this election, when I keep, because of the nature, they maybe, we know they carry last, maybe because of the stubborn streak amongst the average uh, uh, Bini, Edo, Isa, Isako, Orama, we are a most independent, most upwardly mobile, very opinionated set of people. So anybody who will want to circumvent or, or uh, uh, find a way of trying to circumvent the collective will of our people will, will not take it lying low. That is the truth. Why I'm optimistic about the governor is that I'm convinced, very, con I am a man of conviction. And it was my conviction when the, the vacancy, when there was a vacancy in 2015, in 2016, I threw my heart in the ring to participate. I looked at what was going down as at that time. I actually even supported Mr. Osage Isaiah. But the last three and, uh, and a half years in Edo State has given us a governor who ranks on the level of Bermuda, on the level of Ambrose Ali, and, uh, and with the three years or so he has just spent, he might just outdo them. And I tell myself, amongst these persons who are clamoring to rule my state, who do I, as an individual, forget the fact that I'm an Obaseki, who will I give the future of my children to? Who can I entrust the future of my children to? And I tell myself it is Godwin. Because the Godwin of 2016 wasn't a governor. But the Godwin of today is a man who has rewritten the entire, the entire political and governance ethos amongst Edo people. And he has moved from being a party man into a movement. Obaseki has championed by Godwin. It's a movement akin to the Zikist or Awoist movement. And that is replete in the daily transformations we see in Edo State. I am not saying this as a form of grand standard. Well, Don Pedro, the, a quick follow-up. A, a quick follow-up. I mean, how can you be so certain that you will win, considering that the votes are, will most likely be split, particularly in uh, Edo North and Edo South, and you can't really predict how Edo Central will vote? No, the Edo Central own is actually the one that is most predictable. 
the Edo Central people have made it clear in everywhere, in every manner particular, it is Edo North that we will be thinking. In Edo North, for example, the deputy governor, the sitting deputy governor, Mr. Uh, Philip Shaibu, has shown so much capacity to the extent that the boy, the, sorry, the young man, uh, pardon me, young, uh, the young <laughs> <Don't> man, <bathroom. laughs> he's a young man, he's younger than, he's younger than I am, so yeah, well. the young man has shown so much capacity to the extent that in, in the, for a whole year, he, he and his political structure were able, till the end, till Oshomole was removed, suspend Oshomole, even in Oshomole's backyard in Edo North. In Edo North, today, Mr. Adam Oshomole is almost a personal non grata. In Edo North, if he wasn't, if, yeah, if he wasn't, he would have been able to, even in his own ward, I'm not saying the whole Edo North, you know, if, if there's a saying in Benin, a masquerade cannot dance outside if he cannot dance in his own backyard. And uh, in the donut, Mr. Philip Shaibu has, has unmarked the masquerade in Adam Soshomole. In the south, for example, where I am from, where my family is maybe arguably the largest single homogeneous family of Edo or even South and descent with almost 100,000 people claiming the Obaseki lineage. So I don't see any way, any arithmetic way to, that will uh, give victory to anyone but, but Godwin Obaseki. And when you take that in tandem with his performance so far, don't forget he beat Mr. Mr. Uh, 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 with more than 85,000 votes in the first election when he was a no, an unknown entity when he was only seen as that man that Oshomole campaigns for. But today, Oshomole will campaign for Godwin again. By default, because all we need is to remind Edo people of all the bad things that Oshomole told us made him not to consider Isaiah Yamu, who in spite of being a national vice chairman of the party, who in spite of being a former chief of staff to uh, Loki Benedion, who's been a former secretary to the state government, who is always involved in the very center of politics in Edo State, he made it clear that Edo State was in the doldrums that it was as a result of the principal roles played by Mr. Osage Ezeyamu. And he praised Godwin to high heavens. And Godwin has not now lived to those high heavens. He has surpassed it. It is not what we say. It's not about grandstanding. He's there in Edo State. His, his successes dot the whole landscape like the speckled dots on a leopard's back. And that is the truth. So when I look at it, I just smile and smile and say, oh, it is just the tickets that have changed, but the personalities remain. Why one has shrunk in the last four years, Mr. Baseki has moved in ascendancy in the last four years, in the same time frame. This election, the only thing is, I just pray the they play by the rules, and the people I'm talking about know themselves. They play by the rules and not take our people for granted and not to quote Jonathan, who my, my big boss, uh, 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 Ruben Abati, so defended for four years. No ambition of any Nigerian politician is worth the blood of any Nigerian. So no ambition of any of the two gladiators and others who might join the fray. Is worth the blood of a singular Edo man, and that is the truth. I truly believe that this fight is a fight that has been thrown out of balance. It's been, it's been exploded because of the personalities involved. But in terms of performance metrics, in terms of what the people in Benin are saying, in terms of you even take the way Mr. Adam Soshomole was treated after the summary disqualification of a, U, of a University of Ibadan graduate. <laughs> it was as if the man just, it was just like reverse osmosis. I'm sure Shomole, when he enters Benin today, he will sneak in on the back of an Okada. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you, Mr. Obaseki. I, 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 but I have, a, I have a counterclaim for you now. You just bragged yes. about the 
might of the Obaseki name and all the people who claim your lineage. The Iyamus are no slouches either. Tens of thousands claim the Iyamu name too. But I want to ask you, the conversation has been dominated, in my mind, overly dominated by political permutations. Your brother is an incumbent governor. He ought to be running purely on his accomplishments. Let's hear some of those accomplishments that you refer to as spots on a leopard's back. Can you give us concrete achievements that he has made in Edo State? I started off with the Lagos State Commission of, of, I think, Commissioner of Education, I think, talking on this program today. She was actually reeling out the successes of Edo Best. Edo Best is a basic education uh, 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 initiative of Godwin Obaseki that has just changed, revolutionized, the, revolutionized the, the, the paradigm of education at both basic and, and uh, junior secondary level to the extent that the United Nations uh, last year uh, 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 acknowledged that, to the extent that Mr. Sonwolu, his Excellency Babajide Sonwolu, came on air and publicly said they were going to imbibe that same uh, uh, structure hook, line, and sinker. In those states, all our inner streets are done. In those states, in spite of the fact that we are the least in the in the south south states in terms of um, uh, uh, derivation from 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 oil revenues, we have not owed one month of salaries since Godwin took over. I remember in 2016 where we were campaigning, persons, hordes of persons, died on the streets of Benin simply because old men couldn't collect pensions for 42 months. I remember that in that same time, the young man who was in one of the channel, uh, television stations who ran the, the Edo State uh, gubernatorial debate, the biggest question Gordon couldn't answer was how was he going to handle the backlog of 42 months on paid salaries? Today, this biggest song in Benin is, I don't get a lot. God win. I can tell you today, that there is absolutely no civil servant who has been owed one month, and all the backlogs of pensions have been cleared. I'm talking, I just made those two on the level of infrastructure, educational infrastructure, and human capital, because policies are made for people. Is it, is it electricity? We are aware that right now, Edo State is, after Delta State, is the highest generator of, of, of electricity in Nigeria because of the governor's initiatives. Is it agriculture? Edo State is now also the industrial hub. Is it internet? Now we are using private internet. It wasn't like that before. I couldn't have done this to you, talking serially to you, just two, three years back down the line. So we are saying it. In fact, in Benin, you know, in those days when um, um, uh, politicians want to construct a small road, they will block both sides of Ted Milan Bridge so that people will see government in action. Godwin doesn't do that. He truly believes that we should not wipe developing people, create a, 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 a massive inconvenience for everybody. So when everybody is asleep, Edo roads have been done at night. That is why in Benin they call him wake and see. Wake up okay. and see governor. But yeah, real, quickly, real, see real governor. quickly, are you so saying... When I look at all this... Are you saying yes. Eze Yamu can't even do more? Are you saying the man that has been in the center of power, like you claim, can't even do more? He's got plans for the state. He says he'll change the state and accelerate uh, the state uh, 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 and, and move the state into a greater vista. So are you saying Godwin is without blemish and Eze Yamu can't push the state forward? Uh, it's a, the problem we've had most times is that we don't listen to ourselves in my state. That is why... Uh, Isaiah Yamu uses those. Um, I don't blame him, but we know that the times he was in power as secretary to the state government, which arguably is the engine room of the government, is the time in our state our people call Egypt. Ruben once worked in Benin. Ruben served his youth service in Benin. He knows Benin. He still comes to Benin. And we attest to that. I know you can't say that now on public television. But that is understandable. On a very serious note, the time in Benin when Mr. Isaiah Mu was secretary to the government of the state, is that time in our history that people in Benin call Egypt. 
between 1999 and 2007. It is because of the failings of that government that Mr. Adam Sokshomole shot to limelight. So if I use his past as a barometer for gauging or predicting his tomorrow, it will be zero over 100. That is the truth. But I am saying that prior to now, his campaign um, manifesto that he came up with that time, he didn't do it. Don't, some of us, uh, we were pillars of that. But I don't want to go back to that. I want to take things I can see, things that are empirical, things I can feel, things wow. I can walk <clears throat> around beneath to see, well, things that are much. empirical in the public domain. I'm based on that. Um, Thank you. Of them Thank you very the much, people. Don Pedro uh, of Aseki. We look forward to the election in September and what happens between APC, PDP and the other parties that are also in the race.